Carlsbad Caverns National Park in New Mexico is a geological masterpiece. But when did these caves form? How did they form? And what's still unknown about these caves? All right, before we get started, I want to make a disclaimer similar to the one that I made at the beginning of the Guadalupe Mountain video, and that is that this video will be largely voiceover. Unlike for the Guadalupe Mountains, where the reason was primarily wind and cold, the Carlsbad Caverns prevented me from doing a lot of on-site filming because apparently if you speak at a normal volume in these caves, your voice can travel for over a quarter mile, which is a long way and I didn't want to disturb the other cave visitors and there's also tons of echo, so I know the audio quality wouldn't have been great. I did try to film some while whispering and it just did not work out. You can't hear me like at all. So most of this video will be voiceover and I did also try and get some b-roll with me in shots, but they've purposefully lighted just the cave formations, not the pathway. So there's not a lot of lighting either. So the lighting and the audio for this video is subpar, but the actual cave formations are so incredibly cool. So I highly recommend you stick around to look at these amazing formations and learn about their origin because the story, the geologic story of these caves is still you know, we'll still walk through it and it is just so amazing, especially to see some of these formations. I mean, just like thinking about how those actually formed, how long that must have took. I don't know. It's just crazy to think about and to imagine. So I will stop rambling now and we will get into the geology of Carlsbad Caverns. For this story, we have to go back around 265 million years ago during the Permian period, when this region was part of a shallow sea in the Delaware Basin, part of the larger Permian Basin. Surrounding the basin was a massive reef, the Capitan Reef, made of limestone consisting of the remains of marine organisms like algae, sponges, and other reef builders. This reef now makes up the foundation of rocks we see in both the Guadalupe Mountains and Carlsbad Caverns. But how did this massive reef cause the formation of mountains in one region and caves in another? How are these two incredible geologic features linked? Well, over millions of years, layers of limestone from the reef formation built up, setting the stage for the caverns formation. And as we talked about in the recent video on the Guadalupe Mountains, around 20 to 30 million years ago, over 200 million years after the reef was built and the limestone was deposited, this region was uplifted by forces associated with the basin and range tectonics in Western North America. And this uplift exposed the ancient reef at Earth's surface leading to both the Guadalupe Mountains in one region, but also exposing all that limestone to surface processes like acid rain, for example. But this is where the story of the Carlsbad Caverns takes a unique turn. Most limestone caves form over long periods of time as slightly acidic rainwater seeps into cracks and fractures and dissolves portions of the rock. And the acid responsible is typically carbonic acid, or H2CO3, which can form when water reacts with CO2 in the atmosphere. However, the Carlsbad Caverns are unique because they formed by primarily sulfuric acid, or H2SO4. So how did this happen? Well, four to six million years ago, hydrogen sulfide gas from deep oil and gas deposits in the region rose and reacted with oxygen-rich groundwater, creating sulfuric acid. And given the strength of sulfuric acid, this aggressively dissolved the limestone and carved out these immense underground chambers. And it also led to some unique and beautiful byproducts like gypsum, a calcium sulfate mineral, which can still be found in the cavern floors and walls today. I should note the gypsum is unique because most caves are made up primarily of calcium carbonate. This one also is calcium carbonate limestone, uh, but there is also lots of calcium sulfate from this kind of formation story that involved more sulfur rather than just carbonate. 
Once the caverns were hollowed out, the formation of spectacular speleothems like stalactites and stalagmites and flowstone began. These features formed over hundreds of thousands of years as water dripping into the caves deposited tiny amounts of calcite. And fun fact, the big room in this cave is one of the largest underground chambers in North America and is home to some of the most diverse cave formations you'll ever see. And this big room is what we spent most of our time filming in for this video. So that's most of the video clips you're seeing in this video. Today, the caverns are not just geological wonders, but also important ecosystems. One of the park's most famous residents is the Mexican free-tailed bat. Every summer evening, thousands of these bats emerge in breathtaking flight, which unfortunately we won't get to see this time of year that we're here, but hopefully we'll get to come back in the summertime and actually see this. And one of my favorite things about these caves is that there's ongoing research here that focuses on microbial life that thrives in extreme conditions. Why is this research going on about these extreme microbes? Well, it's because these microbes can help us understand what kind of life could maybe survive on other planets. But why exactly are the microbes here in this cave considered extreme? I mean, if you come here, you'll feel that the temperature is relatively temperate. It's really nice. It's like 56 degrees Fahrenheit right now. It's beautiful in these caves. Why? do we call this extreme conditions? Well, the microbes that live in this cave live in a completely dark ecosystem. Why is this important? Because most of the life that we know on earth requires light to gain energy to live, including ourselves. Plants gain energy from the sun through photosynthesis, and then we go then and eat plants to gain energy and or things that have eaten plants or other organic matter that originally got their energy from the sun. Same thing with the bats that live in these caves. They can go out, you know, in flight during the summers and they can go find food elsewhere that originally got its energy from the sun or from something that originally photosynthesized. Now, these microbes are different because they can't go fly out of the cave to look for food. They live in a completely dark ecosystem here in the cave and they do not photosynthesize. There is no light that reaches down here. So understanding how these dark ecosystems work in cave systems like this and in the deep sea are ways that we can look for clues in terms of what kinds of life could survive on other planets, which is just so cool, you know? Scientists also found some microbes in these caves that can help us better understand antibiotic resistance. I mean, this is crazy. I don't know much about this research per se, but I'll link some articles down below that you can check out. And they also had some information in the visitor center or like the little museum next to the visitor center where you can read more about this research, this ongoing research. And there are over 119 caves in these caverns, and many of them are still being explored today. There's, there's so much left we haven't explored. And you can see or maybe you can't really see the scale of these caves from this video in particular, but if you come here, you'll be able to see. This is just huge, guys. I, I mean, there's endless rooms and they're just bigger. Every one I walk into is just bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's like, it's never ending. I mean, how is this beneath our feet? When we're in Carlsbad, New Mexico, this is insane, you guys. This is huge. So the fact that there are so many caves within this system of caverns still being explored. It's just really cool. And, you know, there's research that you can go into. If you if you want to go research in caves, specifically this one, there's a lot of ongoing research going on. So if you're a student, this interests you. I highly recommend. Anyway, that's all I got for the Carlsbad Caverns, you guys. It's such a beautiful place. I highly recommend you come see it for yourself. I could not do justice to it if I tried, even with a good camera. You just have to experience it. It's quite incredible. And with that, make sure to check out the Guadalupe video if you haven't yet, and I'll see you guys there. Now, if you're thinking about visiting Guadalupe or Carlsbad, I highly recommend checking out the roadside geology books for Texas and New Mexico. They are incredibly helpful when trying to navigate the geology of where you are. And a lot of their geologic maps are marked with roads and markers to help you find out where you are. And that's a big thing because a lot of geologic maps that you can find online 
don't necessarily mark roads and stuff. So you can't figure out where the heck you are. So these are really awesome that they do that. And with that, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I just wanted to show you guys that this is what I look like inside most of the cave, which is why most of this video will be voiceovered <laughs> and videos from elsewhere because the lighting in here, not optimal.